In this video, I'm going to show you how to find the trigonometric ratio of an angle given different scenarios. So to begin, suppose that theta is any angle in standard position and the point P, X, Y, is on the terminal arm of the angle theta. So let's draw an angle, theta here, and we have a point P, X, Y which means that this distance is going to be x and this distance will be y. And this point is at a distance r from the origin. So this will be labeled r. Then by Pythagoras, we know that r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. And then we can see that r is the square root of x squared plus y squared. Now, a very important point here is that the value r is always going to be positive. So think of it as the radius of a circle. And that's always going to be a positive value. So from here we can obtain the primary trigonometric ratios. So we have sine theta and that equals our opposite which is y divided by our hypotenuse which is r. Cos theta would be our adjacent which is x divided by our hypotenuse which is r. And then tan theta is opposite, which is our y, divided by our adjacent, which is going to be x. Now, before we look for the trig ratios, um, there's something else we need to look at. And that is where the ratios are positive or negative. And that is dependent on which quadrant the angle lies. So I'm going to show you this little device here. Um, and then afterwards, you'll probably want to remember it or memorize. So in the first quadrant, if we have the angle here, then we can see that our x value is positive, our y value is positive, and our radius is always positive. So I'm going to put a little plus sign there. So our sine theta is equal to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. So it's going to be positive divided by positive, which means that the results will be positive. Cosine theta is adjacent, which is positive divided by the hypotenuse, which again is positive, and so we get a positive value. Tan theta, opposite is positive, adjacent is positive, positive value divided by a positive value is positive. All right, nothing exciting over here. So let's go to the second quadrant. So in the second quadrant, this would be our angle theta. This over here, that little angle there would be our reference angle. And we can see that this is going to be negative x. This will be a positive y. And our radius, again, is always positive. So sine theta, in relationship to our reference angle, is going to be opposite divided by hypotenuse. So positive divided by positive, which equals positive. Cosine is our adjacent. Notice this time it's going to be negative divided by positive. So a negative value divided by a positive is going to be positive. And then lastly, we have tan theta, which is opposite divided by our adjacent. So we have a positive divided by negative. Oops, I wrote the wrong thing here. So this should be negative. And then that should equal negative. So try the other three quadrants. Sorry, try quadrant three and quadrant four. And pause the video now and see if you can figure it out first on your own. You can see that in quadrant three, the x and the y value are both negative, but our radius is positive. So when we find sine theta, cos theta, and tan theta, sine and cos are negative, but tangent is positive. In the fourth quadrant, the x is now positive, the y is negative, and then the radius again is positive. So this time we have sine is negative, tan is negative, and cos is the only one trig ratio that is positive in the fourth quadrant. So summarizing this, we can say that in the first quadrant, all three, sine, cos, and tan are positive. In the second quadrant, only sine is positive. In the third quadrant, only tangent is positive. And in the fourth quadrant, only cosine is positive. So we usually go uh, from quadrant one, to 
three, and four. So a little mnemonic device to help you is that all students take calculus. Of course, because we're in math class. All right, so let's take a look at some examples. So the first one here, we have a point, 3, negative 7, and it lies on the terminal arm of an angle theta in standard position. Determine the exact trig ratios for sine theta, cos theta, and tan theta. So the point, 3, 7, let's say it's approximately over here. So I'm going to draw the angle, theta. And let's draw the legs of our triangle. And always draw the right triangle to the x-axis because the angles are measured according to the inside of the circle, not on the outside, and we don't know what this value here is. So our x is 3, and our y value is negative 7. And so we have our r as our radius, and we don't know what that is, so we're going to calculate that by using Pythagoras. So r squared equals 3 squared plus negative 7 squared. So r squared equals 9 plus 49. So r squared equals 58. So r equals plus or minus root 58. Now, because we are in, um, say, or we're considering that radius is always positive, we only need to take r equals root 58. So r is always positive. So now we can find our three ratios. So sine theta is equal to, now it is actually the same value as our reference angle. So taking the ratios for our theta is the same as taking the ratios for the theta r, our reference angle. So sine theta is going to be our opposite, which is negative 7, divided by our hypotenuse, which is root 58. Cos theta equals 3, divided by root 58, and then tan theta is negative 7, which is opposite, divided by adjacent, which is 3. All right, let's take a look at how to determine the exact value of trigonometric ratios. So whenever you see the words exact value, this means that you want to find the exact value written as a rational number. with no decimal and no rounding. So this means that you're gonna to need to refer to the special triangles and you do not use a calculator. Now the exact values for the trigonometric ratios can be determined by first determining in which quadrant the angle lies, finding the reference angle, and then using the special triangles to find the ratio. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. So we have 10, 135 degrees. So first, let's figure out in which quadrant the angle lies. So we know this is 0, 90, and 180 degrees. So we can see that 135 falls into quadrant 2. So this is going to be 135 degrees. And then this will be the triangle that we're going to look at. And the reference angle here is going to be 45 degrees. So we went 180, which is halfway around. Subtract the 135 to give us what's left, which is 45 degrees. So knowing that it's 45 degrees, now I can see that I need to use the 1, 1, root 2 triangle that I've memorized. Now remember that because the x is in the left direction, maybe to remind yourself, you might also want to put a negative 1 here. So tan 135 is the same as going to be the 45 used as a reference angle, except that we're going to have it in quadrant 2. So this will be opposite, which is 1, divided by adjacent, which is negative 1. So that's going to give us negative 1, which is true, because remember, in quadrant 2, tan is going to be negative. All right, in the second example, We have a bigger angle, so we have 0, 90, 180, 270 degrees, and then back to 360 degrees. So we can see this one, 
angle is now in the fourth quadrant. So we're going to draw it over here, like so. So this angle here is 330 degrees. But my reference angle is going to be 30. So I know if it's full all around, it will be 360 degrees. Take away the 330 to leave us with 30 degrees reference angle. So knowing this is 30, we're now going to use our memorized special triangle that this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So the radius is 2. The value beside the 30 is going to be root 3. And then the opposite side here is going to be a length of 1. So now when we're looking for cos 330 degrees, it's the same as fighting and using the reference angle 30 degrees. So we have adjacent, which is root 3, divided by hypotenuse, which is 2. I'm going to show you one more scenario in another example. So in some instances, other pieces of information are given to you that do not require you to use the special triangles. However, it is definitely useful to draw a diagram so you can see what you need to look for so you can find the trig ratios. So suppose that we have theta, it's an angle in standard position, and it tells us that the terminal arm is in quadrant 4. And we also know that sine theta is equal to negative 3 over 4. So I already have one of my trig ratios. I want to find the exact values for cos theta and tan theta. All right, so I'm going to draw an angle in the fourth quadrant because it says quadrant 4. And I'm going to draw the triangle that's associated with this angle. So this is my angle. This is my reference angle. Now, I have the information that sine theta equals negative 3 over 4. So remember that the 3 stands for my opposite, and the 4 is my hypotenuse number. So we're going to plot these two numbers, 3 and 4, onto my triangle. So knowing that the radius is always positive, the radius will be 4, and then my y value will be negative 3. So this gives me opposite divided by hypotenuse, negative 3 over 4. So that means that I don't know what my x value is. So I need to find x, and I can do that with Pythagoras. So if x squared equals 4 squared minus negative 3 squared, because it's one of the shorter legs. So x squared equals 16 minus 9. So x squared equals 7. So x equals plus or minus 7. Now, because we are in quadrant 4, the x value is positive. So therefore, x is equal to root 7. Now I can find my cos theta and tan theta. So cos theta is equal to adjacent, which is x, divided by hypotenuse, which is 4 tan theta is equal to the opposite, which is negative 3, and then my adjacent, which is root 7, which I just found. So remember that these values, the root 7 over 4, the values, the fractions on the right side is what we call a trigonometric ratio, and the theta is what we would call our angle.